honestly guys we can't even waste any time we have to get straight into this so i'm pretty sure many of you have seen the news and what's going on on netflix with the new netflix documentary called the tyndall swindler and y'all when i tell y'all i watched this and i was shocked y'all i said i was shocked i could not believe that this sort of thing was still going on in 2020 because it's just completely like absurd um for those of you who don't know the tinder swindler is a netflix docuseries that basically follows the story of three women in the european side of the country and they're basically telling their story about this encounter with this quote-unquote diamond hair of a company called simon levy now y'all simon levy ain't even real y'all he fake y'all he is so made up it ain't even it y'all y'all he is so fake um basically the story starts off with um i'm not too sure how you say her name i believe it's pronounced cecilia so Cecilia basically starts off the docuseries in which she is explaining her encounter with Simon. She's talking about the first date that they went on, how lavish it was, how amazing it was. Y'all, this man picked her. He didn't even pick her up, y'all. He basically swiped right on Tinder. They matched. And he hit her up, told her, hey, listen, I'm leaving London tomorrow. I would love for you and I to go out on a date and, you know, meet up, hang out. So she goes, she meets him, he's at the Four Seasons. Those of you guys who do know, the Four Seasons is a pretty well-known high-end hotel. It is super expensive to stay there per night. And he basically wines and dines her, he pays the tab, and he looks at her and tells her that he really likes her and he thinks that she's cool or whatever the case may have been. And he wants to take her on vacation on a private jet. Now... Y'all, I ain't even going to say too much because, you know, one thing about the girls in 2022, they definitely do want to be flewed up and flewed out. But, like, let's be real, babe. We just met this guy 12 hours ago, if that even. So, off rip, it's already given very much skeptical. But, of course, YOLO, as she said to her friends, YOLO. And she ups and she leaves and she goes with this guy to this country he basically gets a rolls royce to take her back from the hotel to her apartment she packs up her stuff right then she meets him at the airport when they get to the airport there's this lady that's with him and she's very vital to the story you guys very vital to the story there's this lady that's with him he's telling her that he has a kid and like all this stuff that like at this point is any of it even true we don't even know but nonetheless he does that whole thing and you know she goes and she spends time with him and basically his mo from what the entire docuseries seems to be is he makes these women feel very comfortable with him he sells them this dream that he's this really rich billionaire tycoon diamond guy who's got all this money but in reality he's really just a bum like let's really talk about it you're a bum and you know, he sells them the dream. Everything that girls are looking for. This guy's got money. This guy's handsome. He's fun, spontaneous. All of these amazing things. But he ends up going ghost at some point. Basically telling them that, like, his enemies are after him. And he needs to go completely off the grid. They're opening up credit cards in their names. Y'all, in their names. For him because he's supposedly quote unquote running from his enemies off the grid. And he's telling them like I'm going to give you the money back. Don't worry about it. Everything's going to be okay. I can't wait to see you. Like just selling these girls such a false dream. And it's completely disgusting. And eventually by the time these women realize that they're actually caught up in what is a scam. It is completely too late. Unfortunately in Cecilia's case this lady y'all dug herself into 250,000 euros worth of debt over this guy. 250,000 euros is literally quarter of a million dollars. Like, actually, you know what's crazy? 250 euros is actually $500,000. So this fool scammed her out of 500,000 USD dollars. Like, are you dumb? And the part that really gets me, y'all, is why is he... So he's using the money that he's getting from other women on the next girl. 
it's, it's crazy. So basically, this docu series follows Cecilia, Pernilla, and Aileen. And let me tell y'all something. One thing about Aileen, my girl Aileen was the goat. Okay, Aileen made sure that he got what he deserved. And the biggest issue that I have with this, it kind of just comes down to the idea of like, is online dating really necessary? Like. Do we not want to go back to meeting people in person? Like, I don't know. I guess I would feel better if somebody scammed me that I knew in person, in a sense, rather than somebody I met online. But, guys, I also want to let you know that it's very possible to end up in this kind of scam, especially if a person is selling you a really good story. I mean, there are some people out here, guys, that they are habitual liars. They lie for no reason. They, they, they lie so much that they believe that what they're telling you is the truth. And... When I tell y'all, Simon Levine, a.k.a. Shimon Hayut, a.k.a. the Tinder Swindler, is one of these people. Y'all, he's one of these people. Why this man hops on Instagram talking about how, oh, this is defamation of character. He's talking about he's going to sue them for defamation of character. You're going to sue me for defamation of character? Mister, you stole like a million dollars from me. What you mean? You're going to sue me for defamation of character. This is crazy. Do you understand what I'm saying? Like this is absolutely mind boggling and I cannot make this up. And apparently now he's like banned off of all like, you know, Instagram, TikTok, like all that stuff. He's not allowed to be on. But y'all, this man made so many aliases. And the part that really killed me the most was that towards the end of the docu-series, you basically find out, like, you know, like every other docu-series, what's, well, not docu-series, but documentary, you find out what's going on in that person's life now. And y'all, why is this man free from jail after only doing a five-month sentence when he was supposed to serve 15? Mind you, he didn't even go to jail for the fraud that he committed i'm like completely confused on what he even went to jail for because at this point it's like babes he didn't go to jail for the fraud so what what did y'all really lock him up in the prison for and truthfully y'all when i tell y'all like they had a segment where they was just getting people saying like oh my god well when i knew him his name was this and he took this much money for me and it's just so crazy to me how like in 2022 with so much technology and like you know, like, it's just so much more advanced in the world that, like, people can get away with stuff like this. And I think that the reality of the situation is just that we're so used to a certain type of scam that people have kind of, like, labeled, like, you know, the dating scam where it's like, oh, it's this guy and he's, like, sitting in his basement and he's, like, posing as this person and he's probably asking you for, like, $100 here, 200 there, 1000 thousand, two thousand $2,000. But, like, this is a person that you never meet. This is a person that you know after a while has to be a fake person because you never meet them. And I feel like for these women, the situation was so completely different because this was a person who was urgent to meet them, very quick on meeting them, very like, oh my God, I'm only here for a few days, please meet me. He made sure that he kept his schedule so quote unquote busy that these women would feel honored to even be in his presence like when I tell y'all this man had this situation down to a T like I truthfully I truly believe that if Cecilia never went forward to VG magazine or like the newspaper people he would have still been committing this type of like this isn't even petty larceny this is like FBI level real life federal crime y'all real life federal crime this man will be out here still committing all of these federal crimes and nobody will really know what's going on and anything like that and honestly i just want to but i just want to know like what's your opinion on this whole situation like i know they always say don't blame the victims but of course in certain situations you do have to look at something overall as a unit so my question to you guys is like what do you really feel like should have happened in the case of the tinder swindler do you feel like the lady should be responsible for paying off the debt that they owe to these credit lenders and these banks? Do you feel like the banks and the credit lenders should wipe it out because this is such a high profile case? Like, what do you really feel? And I just want to know, like, what would you do if you were in these ladies situation? Like, of course, we, you know, of course, it's different when you're actually in it. But I just want to hear from you guys what you think you would have done. Thank you guys so much for listening to me. And talking about the situation, I will definitely catch you guys on another video later.